a very white, white college in a small town called Kalamazoo, or Kalamazoo, Michigan. It's a tiny little place. It is a real place. Uh, growing up a little Muslim girl in the Middle East, I had no idea uh, that Kalamazoo actually existed, you know? And then it was like Timbuktu, you know, or Israel. <laughs> Fantasy worlds that don't really exist. <laughs> so I moved to Kalamazoo, and one day we get a, we get a warning. It says, students of color, you're excused from classes today. There's been a, a threat. Uh, someone wants to come uh, onto campus and possibly harm you all. Please stay inside and be careful. And all four of us were like, yeah, we know. <laughs> all right. Uh, we are in Southwest Michigan, the meth capital of the United States. Uh, the next town over is called Almost Indiana. <laughs> Everyone here looks like the cast of Making a Murderer. We understand. <laughs> you guys ever get so high someone thinks you're a tourist? Because <laughs> I got on the bus the other day looking a little confused. <laughs> I get off of my stop and this guy yells out, Welcome to Philadelphia! <laughs> Turns out I got on one of those big red bus tours. <laughs> and if you look confused enough, they just let you on. <laughs> I'm Alyssa L.J. Vegan. supposed to have a two-person bit. Um, one of my friends, who I won't name, Annie Paradis, I hate her, she didn't show up. Uh, super pissed about it, but it's fine. I'm not upset. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and like do it. It's about farts and peanuts. Oh, and, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, it's, uh, Woo! Oh. Oh, let's do the joke. <laughs> Whoa! What? Yeah, I know what it says. I'm wearing the same shirt. It's good. Oh my god. Okay, see, my shirt makes sense. Sorry, girls, I'm gay. Yours doesn't make sense. No, no, it's, it totally does. It's kind of just like, um, I'm sorry, girls. Uh, I'm gay. I'm gonna break your heart. <laughs> no, what? That's <laughs> not what it means. That's not at all what the, you're giving it a new context. No, I mean, okay, uh, okay, it's kind of like, um, I'm sorry, I don't mean to bother you, I just overheard, and uh, I too am also gay, and I will just, um, I'll be over here, and you just let me know when you're ready. What are you talking about? No, this shirt, <laughs> the shirt does not assume that you're interrupting a conversation. <laughs> it's not anywhere on the shirt, it's not, it's pretty straightforward. It's, sorry girls, I'm gay, like a man, you know? Yeah. I okay, think okay. it kind of makes sense. Okay, okay, no. Maybe you're just, I don't think I'm fully painting a proper picture. Okay, so it's like, cause like, it's like Thanksgiving. And like, my mom is there, and like, my aunt's there, and my sister's there, and like, Psh, sorry girl, I'm gay! And I'm just like picking up the kid, and I'm picking up the turkey, and I'm just like, eh. Okay, you know what, I don't know, Annie, I'm gonna have to stop you right there. I'm gonna have to stop you right there. I'm just gonna have to stop you right there. Cause, I don't, think that you're actually connecting with the audience. I feel like you're, you always do this, you know, you always take it to like a weird dark place and it's really, it's supposed to be light and fun. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm gonna like stop you right there. <laughs> um, cause like honestly, like they were laughing and like we were like having a moment together and it kind of felt like this like back and forth exchange. So like honestly for you to be saying that, it's like kind of- Okay, I'm know. sorry, I'm actually just gonna have to stop you right there. Um, because I feel like you are now telling the audience how to feel and I feel like it's not fun for them. Sorry, I'm gonna have to stop you right there. Oh. I'm gonna have to stop you right there. Um, Cause honestly like, it was like I came in with this like energy, this passion and like, it felt like honestly like we were okay, all- Okay, I'm gonna like, have to stop you right there because I, I just, I just think that it's like, you know, telling the audience what to think. Okay, so like, I'm just gonna have to, like, oh, I'm what? gonna have like, to stop you, like, right there, like, where you are, like, I'm gonna have to stop you. Cause, like, okay, I, I'm gonna have to stop you right there, I, because I just feel like, uh, maybe, you know, you came in with a negative energy, and it just sort of came in. Oh, oh my god! I'm gonna have to stop you right there, like, honestly, we're, like, at an intersection, I saw you coming out, I was like, I have this. Okay, I'm gonna have to stop you right there. I'm just gonna have to stop you right there. I'm just gonna have to stop you
was drinking. Cool. This is ours now. That one's ours. That's our drink. Thank you. God, I mean, honestly, like you guys could have like been more present. You guys are kind of enabling all that. Yeah, you guys are actually a really rude audience for that yeah, one. Like, like, like you sort of oppressed us. So yeah, and, like, it was live kind of, with like, that. Yeah. Should, <laughs> well, let's, just with the, let's just do the joke now. Yeah. Okay. So I was farting on a peanut, and that's basically it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Cool. Negative audience. Um, well, uh, I know what's gonna get you guys. In the mood, more show, and before we get to our next stand-up comic, we do have somebody very special here, so please give it up for a scientific Ooh. research person! Wow, wow. Scientific Yay. research person! Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. I'm a scientist, and I'm going to collect some research. I'm going to need your, uh, I'm going to need your uh, participation if you wish. your left hand. <laughs> and then if you're between 21 and 30, if you could go ahead and raise both hands. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to move on to the next question. This next uh, survey question is employment. If you are currently employed full time, 40 hours or more a week, if you could just, um, if you could just go woo, woo, woo. Oh, I was not ready. Uh, if you could just, <laughs> you could just do that one more time so I can just calculate it uh, uh, on the count of three. One, two, three. Woo! <laughs> part-time, which is between 15 and 39 hours a week, if you could go woo woo. Woo woo! Is that just that, those three? <laughs> and then if you're unemployed or a student or between 1 and 14 hours a week, if you could just go... you've completed. Um, so just respond with the highest level you've completed. If you can't figure it out, I'll know where to put you. <laughs> if you've uh, completed a, a high school equivalent or GED, if you could just go <laughs> I think that counts as one. <laughs> If you've completed some college, if you could go... <laughs> Hold on, someone's having a hysterical laugh. I'm trying to count the results. I'm trying to count. If you could laugh into your shirt. <laughs> Great. And now if you've completed four-year degree, four-year college degree, or a graduate degree, four-year or graduate degree, if you could go, ew, look at me, <laughs> look at me. <laughs> and now finally, if you have a PhD or higher, if you could just say, fancy. <laughs> That's one. <laughs> Great, we're gonna move on to marital status. If you are partnered or married, if you could just be silent. <laughs> if you are single and looking, if you could just go over here. Over here. Did everyone who said over here see who else said over here? <laughs> Over here, one, two, three. Over here. You are 
welcome. <laughs> We're going to go on to our second to last survey question. This is gender. If you if you identify as cis female, cis male, agender, FTM, MTF, gender fluid, non-conforming, intersex, non-binary, transsexual, trans person, trans female, trans male, um, if you identify as any of them, if you could just go, hallelujah! Hallelujah! Beautiful. And if you don't understand why that's such an important question, you can just leave. <laughs> we are close. You could just say yes since you're sure. <laughs> we are coming to the final question. I want to thank you all for your participation in this scientific research survey. This last question is about race. Has anyone here ever run a race? <laughs> you can just clap if you run a race. You can just keep going second time. Okay, beautiful. All right, I'm gonna just tally these results. Wow. I want to show everyone the results of this demographic survey research data scientist. <laughs> How does everyone feel about me sharing these results? I didn't think this would happen, but it kind of makes sense based on what we saw earlier. Um, here are the results. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of the day. Scientific research person! The results are in. That was hilarious. That was unwritten. What I just did was improvised. Uh, okay, we're going to keep the show rolling uh, from some stand up from one of the co creators of Come, Bra Come Rainbows. I forgot the name of the show. Uh, Come Rainbow, so please give it up for Michael Kelly! <laughs> That's right, I brought my own mic to the stage. Because we didn't know how else to do it. How are we doing, Taboo? How are we feeling? I'm very happy to hear that. Oh, that is right. My name is Michael Kelly, and I smell exactly the way that I look like I would. Believe it or not. Uh, did you guys know that if you require a bag for your gas station purchases, you are high? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> Speaking of weed, don't you guys hate, like, don't you hate when people judge you for smoking weed in front of their kids? <laughs> They're like, oh, how can you do that? I'm like, oh my god, how do you not? <laughs> These things suck. <laughs> totally killing my buzz. It's like the only upside to gay. Well, it's a couple of them, probably. <laughs> oh, man, I, uh, I, uh... Since we got all the weed stuff out of the way, I'd like to put out there that I am single. Ooh, try not to rush the stage. <laughs> I am single, I've been trying to date, I've been trying to put myself out there. Um, been dating a lot, I'm, I'm 38 years old, I've been dating a lot of younger guys. Uh, not because I fetishize younger men, it's just the only midlife crisis I can afford. <laughs> Stuff's expensive, <laughs> right? Um, I'm not a big fan of dating to begin with, like I, I being as, such a neurotic weirdo that I am. Like, I feel like when I go on a date, I just, I'm acting like a, a realtor showing a couple a very haunted house, you know? <laughs> like, Don't go in that closet! <laughs> yes, there's a lot of carpet, but that was very popular in the 70s. I mean, you can just, you can just take it out, you know? Just rip it out. The house might even like that, you know? <laughs> Oh, check out that mud room, right? <laughs> oh, finally an audience that gets that one. It's been forever. <laughs> guys are great. I'm glad. Glad this is. I'm glad this is us now. Uh, as I as I mentioned before, I am 38 years old. I'm starting to stare down the barrel of 40, and uh, it's been pretty good so far. But now it's it's like I've been finding more health hiccups in my life, right? As one does. You know, because, like, turning 40 is basically, like, you know, becoming a car that's almost paid off. <laughs> um, 
So I had my first, my first like major surgery last year as a result of, of aging. It turns out um, I was diagnosed. Well, let me ask you this before I get into that story. Uh, why is it that abnormalities found in MRIs are never anything cool? You know, like the doctor doesn't walk in and say, "Oh, Mr. Kelly." Well, I mean, he would say that to me. It'd be really weird if he said that to you guys. You might only get a new doctor if that happens. Um, Mr. Kelly, we found a strange mass growing in your neck, and uh, it turns out it's money. <laughs> Way to go! <laughs> you are chosen. You know? No, it's never that. It's never that. Um, I was diagnosed with what was called a vagal schwannoma, uh, which is a, <laughs> there goes all the energy out of the room. Vagal schwannoma, uh, which some of you may not know, is Latin for that's going to be 16 copays between January and March. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, yeah, it's uh, it's expensive and it's, it's as expensive as it is unfun to have a rare tumor uh, growing inside of you. Because I got all kinds of insane answers as to what was wrong with me. Anything from, well, it could be cancer to, well, it could just be an allergy to weed gluten. I'm like, oh, can't it just be cancer? <laughs> Please. <laughs> it's going to be a long rest of my life if I have to look like this, be gay, and also have an allergy to weed gluten. Right? <laughs> I already look like a 40-year-old barista. It's like, we don't need to ice that cake. <laughs> so surgery's weird. Have you, has anyone clapped up if you've had major surgery of any kind? Yeah, yeah, okay. One, a couple of you. A couple of you, the rest of you are doing great. Good for you. Good for you. Um, so let me, whoever clapped, uh, did they make you fill out a living will? Did you even know what that was when you had surgery? No? Okay, that's what they should have. Uh, turns out, well, I didn't know what it was. They're like, uh, Mr. Kelly, do you have a living will? I'm like, well, I guess. I mean, depends on the day. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, usually. <laughs> They're like, no, 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 that's not what we mean. We saw that you were a stand-up comic. Uh, <laughs> They're like, <laughs> if you do have any possessions or do you own a home or anything like that, you know, that you would need to bequeath to someone, bequeath was the word they used, at 7 a.m. in a hospital, uh, should anything happen. And I'm like, house. <laughs> um, I'm like, no, no, you know, honestly, uh, the only thing I've been saving up over the years is just contempt for my dad, which is a surprise to no one. Uh, so should I die on the operating table, all I ask is that uh, you spread my remains all over my dad's front yard. <laughs> I also don't want to be cremated. <laughs> it was a tricky one, but hey. I'm kidding. I don't know where he lives. <laughs> no idea. No clue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, you mean that wasn't apparent by sight, you know? Oh, weird. His No, this is a guy, this is a man. Michael Kelly's a man whose dad was around. Oh, no, oh, God, that went sad. Okay, let's go back. Remember when you were laughing? That was great. Um, let's go more relatable. So while I was recovering from surgery, I watched um, a ton of the Food Network. I do adore the shit of the Food Network. It's one of my favorite things to watch. Uh, my favorite show on the Food Network is a show called Chopped. You guys? Yeah, all right. Yeah, clap it up for Chopped. You know what my least favorite show is on Food Network? Chopped Junior. Let's boo that. Yeah, fucking kids, right? Gross. No, I, yeah, they are, it is the worst. It's awful. You know why, what, why, why is it the worst? Right, no, they do. They know too much of what they're doing. That's the problem. Too precocious children. No one needs that. They're awful. Like, okay, here's why. So I, I'll tell you, don't worry. We're, we're, we're getting there. I'm excited too. So this one particular episode I was watching, uh, they had this little girl, seven years old, cooking on this show, right? Pinyon is my favorite food. I'm like, you're seven. Do you know what my favorite food was when I was seven? Drinking from the hose. <laughs> Which is what I used to call blowing my stepdad. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I know, you were gonna like that one, but I did anyway. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just kidding, it is a joke. This is an art. I have no idea who that guy was, my mother never remarried. <laughs> Food. I do like, I'm a, I'm a big fan of food, I uh, love the stuff, um, I was traveling a lot last year, um, I was on the run, and uh, <laughs> so I was in a lot of airports and I was in a lot of bus stations, um, and I was also traveling a lot, 
and uh, <laughs> and also traveling a lot. Uh, and uh, I felt like you know it's really hard to eat like well in an airport or a bus station. You know, it's all kinds of crap. Like it just got to the point where every time I got off of a plane, like the first thing I did was get one of those pretzels and a hot dog. You know what I mean? Or a hot dog and a pretzel. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah sex with a German tourist in the bathroom. That's what I call that. <laughs> That's what I do. Oh, God. It puts on a lot of weight after a while. Uh, so earlier you were probably thinking, man, that stuff about your dad, that was super dark. Why, why would you wish that upon your father, you know? I get that he's not around, but, you know, it seems gross. And I'll tell you why. So when I was eight years old, my dad took me to meet my hero, who is deceased WWE superstar, Macho Man Randy Savage. Couple, you guys know who that is? All right, good. <laughs> Uh, so we drove for two hours to go see it. Now my dad, who was a weekend dad, surprise, uh, hated professional wrestling. And uh, the entire drive he told me how it was fake, how all those guys were actors and none of it was real. But I didn't want to believe him. But most importantly, I wanted my dad to get his ass kicked by Macho Man. So I decided to call him out when we got to the table. Uh, we finally arrived. We waited for another two hours to meet Macho Man. Now, I don't know how white trash you people are. Uh, and how many WWE meet and greets you've gone to. But I've seen, you know, a fair amount in my lifetime. And uh, usually the guys are dressed down. They're out of character. They're hanging out. Not Macho Man. Macho Man does not disappoint. Uh, I'm pretty sure he was always Macho Man. Uh, at 11 a.m. he thought nothing of wearing head-to-toe gold lame animal prints. So we finally get there, and I say to him, Macho Man, my dad says that you're fake, that wrestling's fake, and that Macho Madness is not real. To which he said, Little Macho Man, let me tell you something. Santa Claus might not be real, and the Easter Bunny might not be real, and the Tooth Fairy might not be real, but Macho Madness is real! Oh yeah! And that is how I learned there was no Santa Claus, there was no <laughs> Easter Bunny, and there was no Tooth Fairy. You guys have been a lot of fun, thank you so much! I am very excited to bring Dan back up on stage. Get out of here, enough, enough. Oh, here, here's a microphone. Here's a Oops, premature <laughs> entry. <laughs> uh, give it up for Michael Kelly one more time. Oh my god, are you guys ready to uh, go ahead and keep the show rolling? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah! All right, two people excited, the rest are phoning in. Eh? Go, 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 go. Uh, give me one more round of applause to show me that you're still present. Yes! And keep that going for Rob O'Neill! Yeah, there you go! We got the trainer. Look at these guys. Come on. Here's got last compliment or joke. And why did the bald man walk out of the wig store? Why did the bald man walk out of the wig store? He didn't want to pay. Oh, love it. Thank you guys for getting rid of this shit. I just moved it. Did you want to watch this together? It's the trainer, no excuses. I got it by telling a kid's joke that everyone hated that, by the way, I wrote. <laughs> Think about it. Okay, uh, so Alejandro, you know who the next comedian is. No, I thought I was next. Oh. Oh, you want to do some stand-up comedy for us? Oh, yes. Okay, well, why don't you go ahead and we'll do your stand-up comedy after we bring up this next performer. Does that sound good? Oh, okay. I guess they don't want to see you at all. You're canceled. <laughs> You're done. Thank you. <laughs> Guys, are you ready to meet your next stand-up comedian? <laughs> Give it up for Sarah Bell! Hey! How you guys feeling? <laughs> I don't know. I think I have too many things in my hands. I'm just going to put these down. And then we'll pretend like this didn't happen. We'll start up from the top. <laughs> hey! <laughs> um, all right. Uh, do you guys remember that time, uh, Tooth Hurdy? You guys remember that time, Tooth Hurdy? Um, I remember it. It's the time I was butt fucked by my dentist. <laughs> all right. Just like to feel everybody out. Hey, we're really into surveying at this show. 
I want to make sure everybody feels uh, safe and good. Um, I am excited that you guys are here. It's cool that uh, people are listening to me while I talk. Uh, makes it a lot less uh, sad. <laughs> I'd be doing this anyway, <laughs> is what I'm saying. Um, it's cool to be on a queer show. I don't know how I uh, identify if I could get uh, bright into being real with you guys. Um, but I, uh, I feel like uh, it's kind of, I grew up in like the suburbs. I had a lot of like rich, uh, hot friends. Um, and I had a lot of douchey, rich uh, guy friends growing up. Um, so I was friends with a lot of guys that uh, loved to watch women hooking up and a lot of hot women that uh, loved uh, getting attention from those guys, and then me. <laughs> you know, so it was like, uh, yeah, let's get everybody to make out. And I'm like, let's. <laughs> I gotta figure this out, I'm trying to work it out. Um, so that was kind of cool. Uh, I think I realized that I was somewhere on the spectrum um, and then on either end when I, I enjoyed that more than anybody else. <laughs> um, uh, but the first time I ever uh, like actually had like a sexual experience with a woman was pretty uh, interesting. It was my friend who was very sexually free, also uh, really into like crystals and chakras um, and uh, convincing herself that she's in love with everybody that she has some sexual experience with. <laughs> uh, which I kind of like appreciate anybody's sexual, uh, whatever you want to do is kind of cool with me. I don't judge. Um, but uh, when we, when she tried to like seduce me, she tried to convince me that she was in love with me. Um, but she had already told me that this was how she felt about everybody else that she hooked up with. <laughs> so it was like, kind of like finding out that you're going to get a surprise party before it happens and just wanting to be like, can we just like, can you stop, like, can we just have dinner and you not like pretend like all our friends are busy? <laughs> like, I still want the party. <laughs> I just want to have to pretend like I don't know what's going on right now. Um... I don't know if that makes any sense. And I don't like when uh, people uh, judge other people's uh, stuff, because I feel like I'm into some weird things. Um, like recently I've been getting off um, watching uh, Chef Gordon Ramsay react to cutting into a perfectly cooked uh, hard boiled egg. <laughs> does anybody relate, does anybody watch does anybody know? Uh, I think Michael Kelly was talking about Chop Jr. I can't watch that because I'm sexually aroused by food, so I'm just like, feel like it's like not the right juxtaposition for me. <laughs> it makes me very uncomfortable. Um, but no, I like, I can't even watch, there's like a, there's um, Master Chef, which is the one where they're serious, right? And then there's the one where they're all bad and Chef Gordon Ramsay is mad all the time. I can't even watch that one. <laughs> Cause he'll like punch a plate of salmon and I'm like, no, I gotta get in a cold shower <laughs> now. <laughs> it's too much. I don't even think, I don't even understand how they're like, that should be on HBO. <laughs> I don't know, I actually was watching, I have this saved on my YouTube page, it's like this clip. <laughs> um, but it's like, uh, they, cooked a, they cooked a Scottish egg on MasterChef, and it's like, do you guys know what a Scottish egg is? Can you clap if you know this? A Scottish egg is a soft boiled egg wrapped in ground meat and then deep fried. And that's the only thing I know about Scottish people. Yeah. I think they're fucking crazy. <laughs> that shit is uh, crazy. Um, but I, <laughs> I love it. It's so much pressure because you basically have to like cook the egg soft enough that once you deep fry it, it's still like gooey in the middle. But you have to cook it long enough that you can like peel it. God, I like when it's a challenge, you know? <laughs> but, um, they, they uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm getting 
I'm going too far into the way I feel about it. It's, I feel like I actually have to move on, and that's disappointing. Um, no, I, uh, I love doing, uh, I do love, I already talked about this, but I love doing stand-up, and I'm just going to move on, because I actually am being sincere uh, <laughs> about that. Um, but I, I do love doing uh, stand-up, and I watch a lot of guys, I watch a lot of guys do stand-up, and it's cool, because uh, I learn a lot about men, which I, I actually like. Um, I used to have to read a lot of... Uh, Seventeen magazine to find out what they were thinking. Um, and now I just go to open mics. <laughs> it's a lot easier. Um, but I, uh, I, um, I notice like there's like not too many things that bother me about men doing stand up. Just like a couple little ticks. Um, and one of them is that uh, when they're doing bits about uh, jerking or masturbating, they'll just say jerking off instead and like exclude the women from the bit. Um, and I don't like that because, uh, like, women masturbate, so <laughs> we can relate. Um, you know, we, like, have to masturbate, actually, so, uh, <laughs> like, guys are not, have not, uh, figured it out. <laughs> Just let us in on the joke, at least. <laughs> at least acknowledge that we have to be doing this. And then maybe just figure it out on your free time. Um, but I, uh... I think the only time that it um, makes sense is that when guys are talking about um, uh, getting caught masturbating, they'll say jerking off. And I think that that makes more sense. Because um, that's not as relatable to women. We're like kind of, we're like too discreet to, to get caught masturbating. Like, uh, I'm masturbating right now. <laughs> and you guys didn't even know! <laughs> No idea. I am going to go finish. Um, but you guys are awesome. Thank you for listening to me. Give it up for the whole fucking all the all the people. There's a whole crew of them. A whole crew of people. Um, fantastic, wonderful. I'm so grateful that you guys came out here to support live comedy, local LGBTQIA XYZ comedy. I am fantastically <laughs> enthusiastic about that. It's so wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I need this so bad. I've been single for seven years. That's the appropriate response. Thank you. <laughs> oh, God. Seven years ago, I felt better. Seven years ago, I was fresh on the market. I was brave, bold. I'd march into any bar like, which one of you is coming home with me tonight? Now I say the same thing, but I'm saying it to a shelf of cheese at the Acme. <laughs> Tonight! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Acme. Yeah. yeah, my name is Alejandro, believe it. <laughs> it's the year 2017, guys named Alejandro look like this. <laughs> Everything has been gentrified up and down. <laughs> <laughs> So some people call me Anchor Baby. I don't know if you're familiar, but that's a legal term. That means I was born on a boat and thrown into the sea. If he floats, he's American. Uh, Bo! Other people call me Latino or Latinx, which is the gender neutral term, which I like a lot. But it's confusing because to me, like Latinx sounds like a pill that you give white people so they can dance with their hips. <laughs> I want to five kids because Latinos are like popcorn. We get together, things get caliente. Next thing you know, pop, 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 There are seven of you and an abuelita and a dog. What's the dog's name? Duke. I want to five kids. I want to five kids, but my dad is so generous, so thoughtful. What a good guy. He spent out those five kids over three moms. My dad is Oprah with the Welcome Back Cotter mustache. He's like, you get a baby, and you get a baby, and you get a baby. 
Maybe, except in Spanish, where he's like, a ti te doy una guagua, y a ti te doy una guagua, a ti te doy una guaguita. Toma, 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 toma. It's my father. That's my dad. I feel I feel good now though. I, I am dating. I'm dating somebody now. It feels fantastic. He's uh, he's ten years younger than me. Uh, all of your applause. <laughs> but I feel like the infant. I feel like the the like toddler of the of the relationship. Like he's ten years younger than me, but like he has a car. He has a job. He knows how to read. It's like, <laughs> he's showing off. <laughs> And, you know, and it's like he doesn't. He's also cranky. He's not into like PDA. He doesn't want us to look gay in public. And I'm like, don't worry. I look like your stepdad. Relax. <laughs> Help me finish this cotton candy. <laughs> uh, but I, I am feeling like really good. I'm, you know, I'm feeling very grown up, very adult. You know, now that, now that I'm in my advanced twenties, I'm 36. I feel like I really. <laughs> come into my own, you know? Like, I feel like, I felt so grown up. The other night, I was walking my dog, okay? We were walking up the street, and uh, and we're getting to the corner, and the, and my dog, Abby, she stops. And I'm like, what, what, what's going on? And she starts sniffing around, and I see, like, uh, just ahead, there's a car that's, like, pulling in and out of the intersection, weirdly, and I'm like, what's, what's going on? So, like, we walk up to where the car's going, and I see that there's a possum that's darting in between the wheels of the car that's just trying to go and spare the possum, but like the driver of the car is getting so like impatient. And there is this little girl, she's like eight or nine years old with like a huge oversized backpack, and she's looking, and the driver of the car is finally like, I'm stopping, I'm starting, I'm stopping, I'm starting. And there's a guy who's like outside of the car with like a long stick just trying to poke the fucking possum to like get out from under the car. Finally, the fucking the driver of the car loses their patience and just is like, I'm getting the fuck out of here, and just neatly very neatly runs over this fat possum oh. with the front and the back tire. Oh. I know, the funny part's coming. And, <laughs> and so, like, they turn, boom, 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 front tire, back tire. And this little girl, like nine or ten years old, sees that happening, and she just takes off running. Swear to God, it's going to get funny in a second. She <laughs> takes off running, crying, 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 poor baby. And I look at this scene unfolding before me, and I'm like, oh, my God. This is probably the worst thing that this little girl has ever seen in her life. But I'm a... <laughs> but I'm an adult. And I've seen worse. And it was like nothing to me. Uh, <laughs> it was nothing to me. It was a little more. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, right. Sure. Sure. Of course. Super sad. Totally. We can all relate to this. Alright. Uh, uh, you know what? what? Do you wanna it's okay. Do you wanna do you wanna maybe do another joke? Yeah. Oh, okay, do you guys wanna hear another joke from Alejandro? Oh, what what's your last joke? You were? Oh. Oh. What happened? He was like faster and not harder. And then what did you say? I said I never took physics in high school. Oh, and that's a nice joke. All right. Oh, you're wrong. Uh, we're going to bring up your next performer. Give it up for the co-creator of Come Rainbows, Annie Parody. Hi. How are we doing? Right? I was like, I was like reading the energy in the back and I was like, I think we should take it down a bit. Right? And maybe um, I was just going to like read you guys like one of my poems. Um, the thing is, I'm, I might just take a seat back here because I think the more space, the more like space there is for feelings to go around. Um, and now, so I just want you guys to know, like, 
like this is pretty like it's a pretty like fucked up poem that I wrote um it's like pretty raw so like honestly like I do have a couple liability waivers that I like to pass out before I read this poem uh, you can just take one and pass it back um it says I'm cool with it and then you just check it off and that says thanks Annie um so yeah this poem uh that I wrote um basically it's just like well, before you read it, um, the thing is, like, I believe, like, with art and everything, like, you need to, like, greet it, right? And you need to, like, like, greet yourself first, right? And so there's this idea of, like, saying hello in the morning, like, saying hello to yourself, right? Saying hello to the day. Um, but, like, I feel sort of like that word is a bit, like, charged. Like, I feel like, because, like, men are saying hello to me, right? And, like, like women are saying hello to me. And, like, the, like, the people TJ Maxx, like, and who are they? Like, I don't, and I feel like that word to me is just, like, too much. Um, so I was thinking we could all begin by saying, like, howdy. Um, and kind of just, like, taking it back from the cowboys. Um, so uh, if you all can just, like, take a moment and just, like, say howdy, like, to yourself. Like, I don't want to hear it because, like, that feels like a personal moment. Um, so, uh, okay, so I'll just read the poem. Um, now that we've all had that moment, um, here's the thing, it's just like, um, before I like get into it, uh, I just like, I want you guys to know that like when I wrote this, like, I actually was in like a really great place, um, so like, uh, even though the poem's like really fucked up and sad, like I wasn't, and like honestly, like things for me are going pretty great, so like, I kind of was like, Annie, can you? Yeah, 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 just like, yeah, yeah, just like, just like, just like, one second. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like, my life is like really great, so I was trying to just like imagine how it would feel to be someone in like a really fucked up position. Um, so like, that's what this poem is getting to, and so like, when I do read it, like, just keep that in mind, like, how hard that was for me to like, put myself in someone else's position, knowing like, my life is in this like, high quality space right now. Like, I actually, the other day, I went to... Yeah, I think we got it. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll totally read it. Yeah, cool. Okay. So I'm gonna read you guys this poem that I wrote. It's like. If you just read the poem, let's just read that poem. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna read it. I'll read it. Cool. I brought the wrong book. Okay. I brought the wrong book. What is in this book? I didn't have anything. You brought an empty notebook. Yeah. All right. Can I get my waivers back? Definitely not! No, I think the waivers are ours. Give it up for Annie Parody. Uh, I'm wasting all of our time. <laughs> are you guys ready for your headliner of the evening? Yes! Keep that energy going for your final comedian, Brandon Jackson! Like she's a nurse, but she's not a nurse. She rides the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I won't accept that shit from people. And it's because I'm a narcissist. I just think I'm better than other people. I had a friend in, in high school when I came out. He was like, oh, I can't be your friend anymore. You know, I don't want people to be like, oh, you're friends with the gay kid. And I was like, you have scoliosis. <laughs> you look like a rat. You play piano in the marching band. You don't even march. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, man. I, I, I didn't deal with bullying well. I wouldn't. I, I mean, I dealt with it well. I didn't deal with it the way they wanted me to. You fuck with me too much, I snap. I say something crazy to you. So you keep making fun of me, I'm gonna kill you and then I'm gonna sue your parents. If you want to. <laughs> Leave my mom alone. Fuck your mom. <laughs> I'm gonna go to your funeral and just hand out subpoenas. Here you go. I should probably take this. This coat makes me look more arrogant than I. Than I actually am. Truth is, I am that arrogant. In this very moment, I got this sweater today. My mother bought it for me. She also bought seven hundred other dollars worth of clothes. I'm pretty privileged. I just lost you guys. You guys are done with me right now. What? How much credit does this mother have? What is going on with this guy? Is he black? Is he Puerto Rican? Is he Chilean? No. Definitely not. I've been accused of being Dominican. Many times. Very confidently, and in Spanish. <laughs> and it's Dominican, I'm like, listen, Miss Abuela, I get uptown. <laughs> that joke was for 
the uh, Hispanics and guys. Woo! Whatever, uh, I am gay. I don't, I don't have time to explain. <laughs> you have to take my word for it. <laughs> you don't believe me, you don't believe me. I can't prove it to you. I'll get down like that. That's the word works. I, uh, I am I'm not any good at it. Sometimes I forget. <laughs> then I see a cute guy on the booty has a right. I'm minimum gay. I'm the minimum amount of gay you can be and be like aware of it. <laughs> you know, like a priest. <laughs> <laughs> conflict in my life. Internally. Especially in Chick-fil-A. <laughs> uh, I want some chicken, but I want to get married someday. I, I went to Chick-fil-A one day and they gave me a soggy sandwich. I got mad. I went up to the manager and said, hey, y'all gonna be against gay marriage. This chicken's got to be right for every single day. <laughs> no days off. I'm coming there on Sunday with this motherfucker. Biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of straight friends, and you know, they, but they, but they be like, oh, you know, Brand. I don't mind if people are gay as long as they don't hit on me in public. And I'm like, you mean like you do to women all the time? <laughs> you don't like that? You think it's rude? <laughs> He's like, well, I'm a man. That's what I do. And I'm like, well, I'm a man too. So what's up? <laughs> say that out loud. <laughs> he said, what are you, pervy? Like, the dick guys look like they're fucking kids? And I'm like, first of all, I don't appreciate what you're insinuating here, but second of all, if you're in medical school and you're 12, what are you doing there? I, I feel like you're fair game. <laughs> you got a stethoscope on, that's consent. <laughs> that sounds like an R. Kelly lyric. <laughs> Outfit all night. I'm starting to feel like you might be a real doctor. I know it's Halloween and all that, but. <laughs> Why don't you tell your friends Lilo and Stitch and SpongeBob that she's done begging for games? <laughs> yeah, I think they drew too far. Where am I going with this? I'm from Delaware. I just moved to Philly. I'm learning a lot about your city. You can tell a lot about a person by how, like, west they live on Gerard Avenue. <laughs> People that live, like, way east, they're like, oh, I live on 3rd and Gerard, I live above a, a coffee shop. It's like, all right. He's like, I live on 12th, 12th and Gerard, I live, I live above a hardware store slash self-serve dry cleaner. I'm like, I didn't know they did that. <laughs> 
Like if you keep saying their name wrong, they'll just change their name. <laughs> What's up, Cheshwan? He's like, it's Edward now. Stop it. <laughs> and I get down on this. How much time have I been doing? Yeah, I'm just supposed to get out of here. Alright, I'll do this. Um, I don't have any street cred. If you looked at my street credit rating, it's like negative, fuck that nigga, it's really low. <laughs> and like, they'll, they won't even pass me the blunt. I put it in the evidence bag and take it to the police station. No problem. And, and there's no problem with that. Not having a street credit, you don't have to have street credit if you're black. The problem is, I don't have any regular credit either, and you need one. <laughs> to get through life. Like, I, I was really broke, I couldn't find a job. I was about to become a drug dealer. But they checked my credit too. They were like, you're not reliable, Doug. Uh, you're a co signer. <laughs> you know you can't you can't sue people if you sell drugs. Did you know that? Some people don't know that. Some people, you can't you can't like sell coke and then like slip in a Gennardi. He's like, ah hey, you can't do that. I was I heard about this guy in West Philly, uh First of all, this is what I learned about. He was a PCP dealer. He sold PCP. You don't need to sell PCP to make money. You can sell any drug. You don't sell PCP because you need money. You sell PCP because you believe in PCP. <laughs> <laughs> you do it. You want to get a Johnny Appleseed to that shit. <laughs> this guy, he sells PCP and he's suing a strip club, you know, right off the bat. He's suing a strip club because one of the strippers stabbed in the neck with a beer bottle. And they don't just do that. It's not good for business. They stab customers. So they're interrogating the guy for the deposition because you got to prove that your, your lawsuit is worth merit. And they find out that he sells PCP in a strip club all the time and he doesn't like, he's married though. He doesn't know anything about his family. His wife is Asian. He can't spell her name. She won't change it. So he's way off. So he can't spell his kids. He's not a sympathetic character at all. He should be in the court of law throwing his mercy at the judge. So he's they're suing him. They're, they're, they're trying to ask some questions. Like, what, what were you doing in this strip club? You got stabbed. And he's like, I was just minding my own business. Yeah. That's impossible. <laughs> Mind your own business in a strip club. They would ask you to leave. What are you, what are you doing? Writing the screenplay? This ain't Third and Gerard. <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> so they're like, well, we found out you sell PCP in this strip club. We thought you said you were minding your own business. And he's like, yeah. I sell PC. <laughs> They're like, we thought you said you were minding your own business. He's like, PCP is my business. <laughs> like, Damn. Can you imagine the attitude? He's trying to sue the strip, but it's like, I'm suing y'all. He's like, you can't sue us. You sell PCP here. You're our PCP deal. We take a 15% cut. Of her. It's a criminal conspiracy. <laughs> That stripper that stabbed you, she was high on your PCP. <laughs> so the Lord is just like, we can't go through with this case. You have no credibility whatsoever. And he's like, alright, I've got credibility where y'all look at it. Sure, I'm a drug dealer. Yeah, I can't spell my kid's name, but I'll spell a lot of things. <laughs> you know what I can spell? P C <laughs> my business. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much for
as soon as you guys demand that we will, because we'll do it.